odd disease and disorders. Um, most of it is just vocabulary, um, but um, we'll also talk, kind of talk about the symptoms um, beyond what the word actually means. Um, we talked about urinary system um, anatomy last time, and um, you know, hopefully we'll start making kind of connections between um, when you start to see uh, symptoms and what types of disorders uh, that could mean for the system itself. Um, first one is hematuria. Uh, hem hemat is blood, urea, urine. So this is just blood in the urine. Um, again, this is a symptom uh, that could signify um, a lot of different things. Uh, could be trauma, like if you get hit in the back, um, you could rupture a kidney, which causes bleeding uh, into the bladder, which then eventually will, will make it out in, in, with the urine. Um, could just be a bladder infection. Um, so obviously if you have an infection, like with bacteria, uh, the, the body's going to send blood to that area with white blood cells. That blood can get into the urine. Um, so that could be that. Um, medications can cause this. Um, as well as things like sickle cell anemia uh, could also um, be a cause of that. Um, urine will actually look red in color. Um, doesn't have to be like this picture. I mean, this is a pretty severe case here. Um, but could even be pink uh, in color. Um, and then microscopic examination um, will show actual red blood cells um, in the urine itself. Um, and there actually is um, an indicator uh, for uh, red blood cells as well. So with the dipstick, um, you know, we're going to be doing a uh, urine test next. Um, most, of, most of the stuff we're going to do is visual. Um, so we're not going to do microscopic examination, but, um, you know, if the, if the urine does look red um, or a reddish tint, uh, that could mean uh, hematuria. Uh, nephritis, um, nephron, or, you know, think nephron is the, is the filter within the kidney. Uh, but anytime you see that uh, neph uh, beginning, usually it means kidney. Itis is inflammation. Um, so that's the technical definition there. Tissues become inflamed. Um, obviously, if they're inflamed, they're, gonna, they're not going to be able to do their job. Uh, what can cause this? Could be an actual infection of the kidney. Um, could be different types of inflammatory conditions, such as lupus, uh, or genetic conditions. And um, there are actually some uh, medications that can cause this as well. Uh, what this can lead to is changes in, in urine color. Um, you might even see hematuria. Uh, you might see blood in the urine. Um, but a lot of times what's going to happen is since the kidneys can't do their job, um, there's going to be an overload of liquid in the body. Uh, so you're going to see swelling in different places, especially the extremities, um, hands, feet, ankles, and face. Um, as kind of the body gets backed up with fluid. A polycystic uh, kidney disease, so poly, many, cystic, is cysts. Um, so these large fluid-filled cysts are going to be on the kidneys. Um, obviously, that is going to cause um, issues within the kidneys themselves. Uh, kidneys can stop functioning, um, and then uh, that's going to lead to their inability um, to really filter uh, the blood um, of, of waste. Um, this is usually an inherited disease. Uh, and you can see this is obviously a pretty um, advanced case here. These kidneys have been removed. So obviously, um, you know, the, this particular uh, example here has caused kidney failure. Nephrolithiasis. So there's that neph again, uh, kidney again. Uh, lith is stone. Um, so these are kidney stones. That's nephrolithiasis is the um, technical term for kidney stones. Um, the actual kidney stones themselves are called calculi because they're um, usually some sort of um, calcium-based um, grain uh, that builds up within the uh, renal pelvis. So over time, um, this things can get larger and larger and larger and larger, and eventually um, will need to be passed uh, through the ureter into the bladder and then out the urethra. Um, most of the time, uh, these things are small enough that they can pass, obviously with usually um, 
a lot of pain. Um, there are some um, situations where uh, surgery might need to be performed, um, but these are in extreme situations. Um, but, uh, you know, these, this is usually a very painful um, situation that occurs. Um, you know, and again, usually it, it starts with um, pain uh, in the back, um, but then it'll eventually move even to the abdomen as the uh, stone moves through um, the urinary system uh, to, be, to, to be passed. Um, but like I said, uh, they can lodge in the ureter, uh, which blocks urine. Um, and because the, the, the spasms, um, you know, your, again, your ureters um, are using peristalsis to push out uh, the urine. Um, that's going to cause a backup, but that's that spasm that you're going to that you're going to feel, um, and, and it's extremely painful. Uh, incontinence is really this the loss of control of your bladder. Um, it can happen uh, just due to age. Um, remember, you've got a couple sphincter muscles, um, one inside the bladder uh, right here. Um, the other uh, is a muscular. Um, uh, like, uh, sorry, they're both muscles, but uh, this would be skeletal muscles. This is the one that you would um, control. Um, so anytime uh, this, this muscle gets damaged or weakened, um, it means that it's very difficult uh, to keep the bladder, um, sorry, to keep the urine within the bladder itself. Um, so, you know, pregnancy, giving birth um, can, can weaken that muscle. Age obviously can weaken that muscle. Um, but there's different types of incontinence. Um, there's stress incontinence. Um, this is urine leaks because of sudden pressure. It's like a sneeze, uh, a cough. Um, urge incontinence uh, means that basically uh, you get that feeling that you have to go to the bathroom and you can't hold it. So it's that, that, in, that super kind of concentrated urge um, and just the, the person can't uh, actually get into to the toilet in time. Um, usually, again, this is happening in older people, so they can't move as fast, too. Um, so that, that's, uh, uh, you know, an obvious, obvious problem with urge incontinence. Um, overflow incontinence um, is that small amounts of urine um, will leak out of the bladder um, as this fills, right? So this gets really, really full, and it's the pressure builds up in here. Usually, um, this muscle is strong enough, um, you know, to obviously over, uh, to keep everything inside and let the bladder stretch. Um, but uh, if this muscle is weak, it doesn't take much as the pressure grows here, um, it leaks out. Um, and then functional uh, incontinence is really not necessarily um, a problem with the muscle. Um, it, it really just means that the person can't get to the the, the toilet in time um, if they're really old if they have you know some sort of paralysis um, or um, you know if they're walking with a walker or a cane and they just can't make it in time uh, that's functional incontinence so dialysis is um, not a disorder um, but a treatment uh, so if the kidneys stop working um, you know, we talked about this last time. Um, we have yet to create a external filter machine as um, as good as the kidneys itself. But if the kidneys do fail, really, there's only one um, treatment, and that is dialysis. And there's a couple different types of dialysis, um, but what this is is an artificial uh, filtration um, to remove the excess waste um, from the blood. Um, this is really the only options we have until um, a kidney transplant uh, can be made. But even after a kidney transplant is made, the kidney transplant, um, the, the kidney itself, will not last forever. The person has to be on um, medication to keep its keep your own body from, from killing off the kidney. Um, but over time, because the kidney is not yours, the body does eventually destroy it. Um, and then you'll need either another kidney transplant um, and you'll have to go back on dialysis. So um, several types here, the hemodi hemodialysis, um, probably the more 
the most, uh, the more common one. I, I don't know if it's really common. It's, but it, usually this is what we start with. Um, this is basically an artificial kidney machine. Um, people get hooked up to the machine. Um, it takes a long time uh, for this to, to work. You have to come in, um, you know, several times per week and have this done. Um, and uh, can take anywhere from three hours or more. Um, the peritoneal dialysis um, basically uses a solution uh, that is kind of put into the abdominal cavity or, or what's called the peritoneum um, and uh, kind of, I don't know, it's almost like shakes it around uh, and then they drain that out of the abdomen um, and that's another way that they can try and remove um, the wastes from the body. Uh, CAPD or continuous ambulatory peritoneal dialysis. Um, what's nice about this one is that um, these last two uh, could be done at home. So these these are much more um, long-term solution so people don't have to keep coming into the hospital. Um, this first one um, is again that peritoneum dialysis um, performed by the patient at home four times a day, seven days a week, but at least it's at home. Um, the other one, uh, continuous cycling peritoneal dialysis, um, uses a machine uh, that um, constantly puts that solution into and out of the abdominal cavity during your sleep. Um, so again, these are done at home. Um, usually, sometimes we're, you know a nurse is required, um, like an at-home nurse, to come and set it up. Sometimes family members are taught how to do this, um, but at least it keeps people at home and out of the hospital. Um, just some uh, kind of this is the machine, the external machine. Um, so this is the first one, uh, the hemodialysis. Um, just hooks up to the blood. The blood goes through. Um, there's an internal filter here, comes back out, now it's been cleaned. Um, those peritoneum, this is the peritoneum, this is the abdominal cavity, um, that a catheter is, in, is, is, in, is put into the body. Now this catheter stays, so that's going to be a permanent catheter. Um, it then hooks up to this external dialysis bag. Um, that solution comes in, um, and then... Um, will eventually, uh, there's a drain line there, so it'll eventually come back out um, and, you know, is obviously discarded. Quick video for you. A master of multitasking inside the human body? And there are two of them? Oh, I know, it's the kidneys. For human beings, they're essential to survival. In fact, the kidneys are small biological marvels. They produce urine, thereby removing excess water and toxins. Produce hormones, regulate mineral levels and blood pressure, make vitamin D, and maintain the body's acid-base balance. Every day, these versatile organs cleanse all the body's blood about 300 times. If the kidneys become diseased or fail, it's a serious health problem because excess water and waste products from the body's metabolism can no longer be filtered out of the blood. To prevent toxins from accumulating, the blood must now be regularly cleansed with the help of dialysis. The most widely used form of dialysis therapy is called hemodialysis. At the center of hemodialysis is a dialysis filter known as a dialyzer. Serving as an artificial kidney, it cleanses the patient's blood during the treatment. Inside a plastic tube 30 centimeters long, about 12 inches, the blood flows through up to 20,000 hair fine fibers. Microscopic pores in the fibers filter out metabolic waste and excess water, which the dialysis fluid then carries away. As the blood cleansing process proceeds inside the dialyzer, a dialysis machine pumps the blood, administers anticoagulants, and monitors circulation. A treatment can take from three to six hours, usually three times a week. Chronic kidney failure afflicts more than three million people worldwide. Most require life-saving dialysis treatment. 
Fresenius Medical Care is the world leader in dialysis. About half of all dialyzers and dialysis machines sold worldwide are made in our plants. In our more than 4,000 dialysis clinics, we treat around 350,000 patients. Every 0.6 seconds, we start a dialysis treatment for a patient somewhere in the world. We are giving patients with chronic kidney failure a future worth living and the best possible quality of life. Fresenius Medical Care. Okay, so um, that's just kind of nice um, visual of what exactly uh, hema, the, the hemodialysis is, um, which again is usually the most common um, and what people usually start with. Um, all right, so uh, glycosuria uh, is glyco is glucose, um, urea is um, urine again. So this is going to be uh, sugar in the urine. Um, now, sugar is a pretty um, important, or glucose is a pretty important um, nutrient for the body. So if it is actually in the urine, if the body is, is getting rid of it, that means that there is too much um uh, glucose in the blood. So the blood sugar is much too high. Um, usually, uh, this is a um, signal that there is um, diabetes. That's probably the most common. Um, but it could also, um, you know, be a sign of kidney failure um, as well. Uh, urinary tract infection. I think most people have heard of that before. Um, basically, bacteria is invading um, the urinary tract. Uh, it can be in the ure urethra. That's probably the most common. But if untreated, it will move all the way up into the bladder um, and cause a bladder infection, which is more serious. And will even continue up into the kidneys and cause a kidney infection, which is obviously the worst um, that you would, you know, you want to obviously have it treated before that. Um, it's actually most more common in females because the urethra. Uh, is shorter and closer to the bladder. Um, so it's easier for the bacteria uh, to move um, up into the bladder. It's also the opening um, of the urethra is close to the anus. Um, and we know that we talked about digestion. There's a lot of bacteria uh, in the digestive tract. So it's very easy for bacteria to move um, from the digestive system um, into the urethra. Um, so that's not good either. Um, in either case, uh, it is more common in females um, than males. Um, once you do actually get a UTI, it's actually more and more easy to get a reinfection. Um, what can happen with a urinary tract infection is that the urethra can swell, um, which is urethritis. Uh, if that's an infection of the urethra. Um, or cystitis, that's an infection of the bladder. So those are the two... Um, those are the two terms uh, associated with those. Um, both of those, though, itis, meaning inflammation of. Um, obviously, if you have an infection uh, in the bladder or the urethra, blood's going to go there, it's going to swell, um, and that causes usually your symptoms. Uh, chronic renal failure or chronic kidney disease um, is basically a loss of kidney function. So this is going to be um, kidney failure. Um, what can cause this? Um, Diabetes, that, that excessive blood sugar, um, constantly causes stress or strain in the kidneys themselves. High blood pressure. Remember that um, from, our, uh, from the video from the last class, um, the kidneys also actually help maintain blood pressure. Um, and if you have high blood pressure, they're going to constantly, um, that means that more fluid is going to want to be pushed into the kidneys itself. But the kidneys only can, can filter so much blood any, at any given time. So what the kidneys do is they actually release um, hormones that uh, restrict blood flow into the kidneys, but that puts pressure on them. So high, high blood pressure, if you have constant high blood pressure, it's gonna constantly put stress in the kidneys, which can eventually cause kidney failure. Um, polycystic kidney disease, which we already talked about, um, prolonged obstruction of the urinary tract, so having a kidney stone that, isn't, that can't be passed. Um, and then recurrent kidney infections from um, even UTIs that just aren't treated. Um, that bacteria moves up into the kidneys. Obviously, that's those bacteria is starting to attack the kidneys, um, and that can cause uh, the kidneys to fail. 
Um, so symptoms, um, acute kidney failure is going to be reduced urine, urine, wow, urine output, um, but swollen legs and ankles and feet. Again, if the, if the kidneys can't work, they're going to, that fluid is going to build up. Um, it's got to go somewhere. Uh, so a lot of times it, it, it's going to diffuse into the tissues and the extremities. Um, weakness and fatigue, high blood pressure and confusion. Uh, chronic ki kidney failure is going to be abnormal blood and urine tests, uh, swelling again, um, headaches, and high blood pressure. All right, and that is the end of our notes. Um, so what you're going to do now is move on to the, um, the uh, urinary system uh, activity, um, the investigation activity. Um, everything's in the folder for you. Uh, just use, you can split screen, use the um kind of the powerpoint to work your way through and fill out the worksheet um that's it